There's a secret delicacy living near the shores of our little town. Squid live and hunt in deep, dark waters. After sunset, the squid come up to the shallows and they can be caught on a rod and reel. Reeling in a live squid's nothing short of fighting a tiny little sea monster. They might be tough to catch, but let's try to make them easy to eat. This is squid that my partner, myself, and our friend Dennis caught one afternoon, just outside of Knudsen Cove. We froze this after we caught it, and squid freezes really, really well. So I unthawed this last night, and we have it out here today. What I'm gonna do is make a lightly flavored boil and let this cook for about 45 minutes. That is about the most foolproof method that I know to make squid tender. You've seen all the different kinds of like bashing and frying it, and sometimes it just doesn't work. So today I'm gonna do as much as I can to make this squid edible. After you get done tenderizing your squid, it's important to just wipe everything down because they're, they, the ink sacks on the inside, but they have some pigment to them that's really hard to keep from uh, staining everything. So I just wanna make sure that I make a clean workspace and that when we come back to boil the squid, that everything doesn't stick to the counter when we're there. So beyond the bashing and hitting and massaging of squid, our primary method of tenderization is going to be boiling it for a long time. We're also going to add a little bit of baking soda and some salt, that'll help break it down even further. And then I'm gonna add some bay leaf and some onion just to like give it a light flavor. But we aren't gonna use all this squid in today's preparation because it is a good item to just poach and have sitting around and then finish off at a later date. So we're gonna save most of this, but with the rest of it, we're gonna make a nice Spanish-inspired creation that we're gonna finish off in the broiler after we get done boiling it. So I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of baking soda. <laughs> and this method is called velveting. And that just kind of breaks down the proteins on the outside. I'm gonna add a significant amount of salt, just like, enough to make it kind of like seawater. And then I'm gonna add this onion and the bay leaf. So I'm just adding these to the pot. It's weird how good it smells right off the bat. I'm kind of positioning these into the pot so that they aren't on top of each other. But it's all right to have a crowded pot on this because we're just gonna let them cook off nice and slow. Then we're gonna cover it and let it simmer for 45 minutes. While the squid's on the boil, we're gonna make a vinaigrette that we're going to just drizzle over everything when we're done. I went and found one of the better olive oils I could in town. I'm not usually happy with the kind of olive oil I get in town because it's all different blends of different kinds of places and I never know how long the olive oil's been sitting in the bottle but I got as good and as reasonably priced one as I could and I'm gonna do about half and half olive oil and butter just to kind of hedge my bets on how good the oil is gonna be and then we're gonna add some flavors like smoked paprika a little bit of spicy red pepper garlic onion black pepper some parsley thyme and then we're just gonna kind of let it sit on a low heat until all the flavors come together and once it cools down, we're going to add some red wine vinegar, and that will be our vinaigrette that we're going to put onto our squid. Let's cut to a slow-mo montage, and I'll show you how it's done.
So I let the oil cook down for about five minutes, just enough to let the flavors come together. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of red wine vinegar and just splash it into the pan. Not a lot, just enough to add a little bit of bite. Stir it up. And I'm gonna take our parsley, put it at the bottom of the jar or whatever container this will live in. And then I'm gonna try and avoid making a mess. Wish me luck. And I'm gonna pour this into the container. And I'm just gonna swirl that around. And there we have our vinaigrette. Okay, our squid has been cooking for about 30, 45 minutes and it is steamy. Still really, really hot but we need to kind of give it a rinse to get that baking soda off. So we're gonna move over to the sink and I'm just gonna let the cold water run and just let everything kind of uh, come to an equilibrium and temperature before I can actually handle it and get it back into the oven. So boiling these things work really, really well. And one thing that our local hook arm squid have that not a lot of other squid do, um, instead of suckers, they have little hooks on their arms. And people worry about getting those caught in their throat, and it's understandable, but if you boil them like we have, then those hooks just completely disintegrate and become little ridges along each of the tentacles. And those actually crisp up really, really nicely under the broiler. With all of our squid cooked completely, we're just gonna put a few of these away for another day. I think I'm just gonna keep a couple out. I'm just gonna stuff a few of these in here. Leave a few of them in our pot. Put the rest of them in the fridge. Because preparation is really really easy for simple dishes like this. Now I'm taking what we have left, three bodies or three tentacles, and I'm just going to split them. Just split them so we can kind of get a better more even laying out onto our cookie sheet. We're gonna pull out our processed and rinsed squid, and we're just gonna put them onto a little towel, pat them dry, rub them down, and we're doing that just so the next layer of flavor sticks to the outside. I'm gonna toss them over, flip them over, make sure they're relatively dry, put them onto our cutting board, and then I'm going to grab our cookie sheet. It is hot and ready to go. We have our little tray here. I'm going to drop some oil onto the squid, and just a little bit of salt. And then right onto our cookie sheet. And now these are going right into our broiler. I have it set to high, and we're gonna pay a lot of attention to these because we don't want them to like turn completely dark, but we do want as much as possible getting as crispy as possible, as quickly as possible. So let me just shove these in here. And in about 10 minutes, we'll be ready to plate up everything.
So we've taken our squid out of the oven and it's got these nice little crispy bits here and then it's got some really nice tender bits along here that just pull apart and you can... Mm, wonderful. Our oil is deep and rich and finished with that parsley. It's nice and fresh too. And I made some potatoes that it's sitting on top of that I'm going to show you how to make in a future episode, but they're just covered in our luscious oil and I'm going to... I could eat this with my hands. I just want to like go into it real hard. But <laughs> it's just a really sensual, easy dish that looks a lot more impressive than the effort you put into it. Thanks for tuning in again, and I'll see you next time. So here's what I learned from cooking squid under a broiler. Don't let it sit under the broiler for very long. It's a dry heat, and we're just looking for a little bit of color. Just make sure that the oven is preheated. You can also finish off the squid in a hot frying pan or a ripping hot grill. Today, we're gonna to combine both of those examples and make this squid into something that is squid. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs>